Howdy everyone, my name is Jason Bourne and this is Food Mood on YouTube. I am bloody thrilled to be back in Italy, in the capital city of Rome, a place which needs no introduction, but it is one of the world's great food cities. I'm spending three full days here in Rome and it is going to be a non-stop food tour. I'm going to be eating copious amounts of traditional Italian food and specifically Roman cuisine. It starts today and it's going to get wild. Pizza, pasta, tiramisu, gelato, aperol, negronis and so much more and that's just today. Stick around, the sun's out, my stomach's empty, it's time to eat some Italian food. time for breakfast so I guess in Rome you got to get pizza I'm heading to Forno Campo di Fiore it's a bustling bakery on the outside of a visit market square in central Rome they specialize in baked goods but especially they do pizza by the slice so I'm gonna try one of them and have that for breakfast goods from Fauna and there's nowhere to sit so I've perched myself next to this fountain and this interesting bit of scaffolding artwork. So today I got two types of pizza, uh, pizza rosso and pizza bianca. First we've got the pizza bianca. It's simple pizza dough and it's seasoned with olive oil and salt. So very simple, just high quality ingredients and that's what the Romans specialize in. Also got Pizza Rosso. Oh, that is red. How about that? You can see salt flakes. You can see the browning, the caramelization of that pizza dough. That is a beautiful slice of pizza Bianca. First thing you notice about this pizza Bianca, it is soft and fluffy, um, but it's crisp on the outside. You can listen to this. You know it's crunchy. Pizza for breakfast in Rome. Oh, that dough is right up there. It's crispy, but it's got an appropriate amount of chewiness too. Mm. Oh, great amount of salt on this pizza. It's not overwhelming. You can taste the fat from the olive oils. It really brings extra freshness to this pizza dough. Oh, oh mate. <laughs> Look at the layers of tomato on this pizza rosso. It is coated. You can see the texture on that pizza. Looks absolutely vibrant on this pizza dough. Pizza Rosso. Mm. Oh yeah. Those tomatoes are tart. They're fresh. And this, this slice is more crispy. There's definitely more crunch to the base of this one. I like it. It's a variation that I get around. Those tomatoes are so fresh, they make you feel good. Have a look at the difference in layers between these two. You can see that pizza Bianca is definitely a bit more focaccia-like, a bit more air in between, and then this pizza Rosso is crispier. If we look at the bases too, definitely more char and caramelization on that Rosso. They've done well, the Romans. What a way to do breakfast here in Rome. Damn, that pizza was banging. It's the best pizza I've had in a long time. Just had a stroll through the Campo de Fiore, which is one of the central markets. It's a bit touristy, so it's not really a place that I would go and buy some souvenirs or buy fresh produce. It's picturesque and it's a feast for the eyes, so worth having a quick stroll around before heading on to the next food stop. San Anastasio is a coffee joint which has been around since 1938. It's said by many to be the best coffee in Rome, so we've got to check it out. They specialize in Arabica coffee, which is known to be some of the tastiest coffee.
Aragostin uh, crema. Yeah, for That's the one I just got. Aragostin pastry filled with cream, cold coffee with cream on top. Very decadent for the morning. Should I get into this cream? Not actually sure how to go about this. Oh. Fresh whipped cream. I'm gonna try the Aragostin lobster. Very flaky and nice sugary cream inside. This is probably sugar overkill. Man, that's good. Got through the cream and tried to do the coffee. It's really mellow. It doesn't have any pungent bitterness, nice and sweet top coffee. Very much a get in and get out sort of joint. You come in, you quickly order, you stand yourself at the bar, you give the guy your order and then he will just fire off your coffee like that. I got pretty greedy with the cream. I was just going in for the espresso at first, but then I saw the, the freddo with the cream and I got greedy, so that happens sometimes. Definitely a coffee stop to hit up when you're in Rome. sat down at De Enzo, which is a bustling Victoria in the heart of the charming Travestery neighborhood. I got here five minutes before open and the wine was already 30 deep. It's a Tuesday, make sure if you get here, it's early and it's before they open at 12.15. As you line up, you can already get the scent of rendering that wafting through. This place specializes in traditional Roman cuisine and it's the number one place that people say to go to when you want to eat pasta in Rome. I've ordered three dishes today. First one is the artichoke, currently in spring, so artichokes are in season. Uh, we've got a carbonara, which is one of the specialties here at Enzo, and also an amatriciana. We've got an Aperol spritz here. I've been waiting for this since I got off the plane. First Aperol spritz in Rome. It's got Aperol liqueur, Prosecco, and a dash of soda water. It's all over your strong orange taste, fizziness from Prosecco, the dream. Here we have the artichoke. It is fried Jewish style in sunflower seed oil. It's so crispy. If I just pull off, look at that flake. So artichoke is a species of thistle cultivated for food. It's a Roman specialty. It's in season, it's spring. So crispy and crunchy and nice and salty too. Gonna cut into this artichoke. So soft inside. Let's try the artichoke part with the, with the petals. <laughs> that is so earthy, perfectly salty. That is superb. I can see why the Romans get around this. Look at the colour of this. So soft on the inside. Mm. This part here is really fleshy. You get all the crispiness on the outside. Fleshy, earthy artichoke on the inside. Next on the way is two classic Roman pastas. The first one is carbonara, five ingredients to carbonara. Pasta, eggs, pecorino romano, which is a hard Italian cheese made from sheep's milk. Guanciale, which is cured pork cheek. And then pepper. Pepper that they use at De Enzo Sarawak pepper, which is a really high grade pepper sourced from Borneo Islands in Malaysia. So you know they're really focusing on the quality ingredients there. What are the other
have the ingredients they use it to Enzo, a source from their own farm. So it's really local, pure Italian ingredient. The Amatriciana is similar, homemade rigatoni pasta, tomatoes, one charlie, pecorri romana, pepper. Sometimes people put chili in it, I'm not sure how they do it here specifically. But we'll taste it and we'll find out. Got myself a red wine. This one is called Amoresco. It's from the Lazio region, which is the area around Rome. I haven't come across this before. It's, I think it's got a grape called Sesamese. Uh, looking forward to trying this one. She's from Lazio wine in Rome. Okay, got a big hit of cherry. It's very ripe. A little bit peppery too. It reminds me of like a really young Shiraz. Not like the big bold ones you have in Australia, but like a sort of smooth one, a tart one. Kind of like the tomatoes here. Carbonara has just arrived and there's the unmistakable smell of that sharp pecorino cheese. My mouth is watering. I just have to get right into this carbonara. Look at all that pecorino cheese, the fried guanciale. The rigatoni is so soft when you cut into it. Oh. First bite of carbonara in Rome. Oh my god. That is creamy on another level. That guanciale is so salty and meaty and you can taste the fat right away. It has a great level of pepper in there. I just have to get another bite right away. That is the next level. I'm just gonna have to slam the rest of this carbonara. I don't think I can keep talking. I just gotta eat this. Cool, I don't see how it gets any better. This trip is over already. Wash it down with some Roman wine. The, the old saying is basically, if it grows together, it goes together. So we have Roman pasta, Roman wine. And that just washes away all that creamy cheesiness. It's so vibrantly yellow. I imagine they're using more egg yolks to get that beautiful color. I want to get some more of that pepper as well. The pepper is not overly spicy, but it is woody and almost a little bit floral. Everything they've put together in this carbonara works so well. I'm usually more of a spaghetti fan than a rigatoni man. I may just be converted right now. I have a squiz of that guanciale. You can see all the fat in this part here and then the, the chewy meaty part. It's not overly crispy, but it is well cooked. Two pastas here now. Amatriciana and carbonara. Amatriciana has arrived. So you can see it's got all the pecorino on top. Again, that beautiful rigatoni. Tomato sauce this time rather than the creamy cheesy sauce. I'm sure it's still going to be bloody cheesy. And then underneath that is going to be some guanciale, so more cured pork cheek. The good stuff here in Rome. This tomato sauce is almost orange. There's so much cheese in there. I want to see if I can find a slither. There we go. We've got a slither of guanciale to go with all that beautiful rigatoni and tomato sauce. Mm. Oh. That tomato sauce is so cheesy. You get that sharp pecorino taste. There's the vibrant taste of fresh tomato in there as well. Just simple Roman food done extremely well. With that rigatoni and that sauce coating it. Also, a lot of people have been complaining about the way that I hold my fork. I don't see anything wrong with it. I usually I hold it like that. I have no idea why. It's what I do. I'm going to keep doing it anyway. Oh, sea puppy. Wash it down with red wine. 
Da Enzo is past her head. What a play. Cheers to that. Tiramisu from Enzo has just arrived. Look at this. This is a work of art in this one cup. Saviati biscuits, dark cocoa, hazelnut cream. Amazing. We've got real cocoa on top. Look how insanely creamy that looks down there. Tiramisu, the ultimate coffee Italian dessert. Bloody hell, everything here just looks incredible. Let's get into this tiramisu. Oh, that cocoa's falling off. Try not to drop it. My God. This is heavenly, heavenly, creamy, beautiful dark cocoa on top. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm chomping to get into the depths of this. We've got some biscuit in there. Oh my god. This is a perfect tiramisu. I do not take that lightly. Beautifully creamy, nice amount of chocolate. It's not a pungent coffee, it's just that light coffee taste from the soaked saviati biscuits. This is supreme. Gotta get tiramisu at to Enzo. Game over. Oh my god, what can I say after eating that meal at De Enzo? If you want a place that just absolutely nails the Roman classics, this is the place to be. I know it's only the first thing I've eaten, but it has lived up to the expectations that everyone has placed on it. I'm gonna spend a bit of time walking around this Travesteri neighborhood. It is really beautiful. It seems quite calm compared to the city center. And then heading off to the next place. Salamaria. The Roscioli family has been synonymous with Roman food culture for over two centuries. They have their own little pocket of central Rome where they have their Salamaria, they have a bakery, a cafe and also a wine bar. I'm looking to get some Italian cured meats today and have a few aperitivos as well. <laughs> Really cool place. You walk through, past all the wine bottles, the meats, descend the stairs, and then you're here. Got a mountain of bread here. Looks quite similar to the pizza Bianca from this morning. And then some soft brioche. Negroni has just arrived, the ultimate Italian bitter cocktail. Quick my wits with all of this. Negroni in Rome. <laughs> that is perfectly bitter, nice and fruity. You can taste the herb in it as well. Well made Negroni. Beautiful colour. No wonder the Italians love it. Any pasty has arrived. So I have the burrata, which is the fresh cow's milk cheese, creamy inside, and stracciatella. Anchovies on top, house salumi plate. I honestly have a trouble remembering which is which. I know this here is lardo, you have salumi. This section is cured here in Lambrusco. There is a part cured in cherry beer, and then also, I think these meats are cured in Nebbiolo. Gotta start on this burrata, it looks so creamy. Oh. 
with that. You can feel the hard casing but then the soft inside with that stracciatella and cream. I'm going to get right into one of these anchovies as well. Mm. Man, that is that burrata is so milky, and that anchovy is that as salty as the briny flavour to it. Just cuts through all that creaminess. Bloody good. Here's the burrata by itself. Mm. It's so milky. We've got a bit of tartness on the end of it too. Next I've got to tackle some of this salumi. Don't know how I'm going to go about it. We'll just pick up one bit at a time and I'll tell you what it tastes like, I guess. Okay, so here we have the salumi. You can see the big fatty morsels inside of it. And there's even a little bit of pepper too. Here we have the lardo. So that's pure ham fat. You can see the crust again with the pepper on it. This here reminds me a bit more of bresciola. Looks like a leaner cut of salumi. And then this one here is cupatello. Very much a prosciutto consistency. You can see the fat on the edges there. And then all the meaty parts. And we've got another piece here. Not sure what it is. Looks very similar, but a bit more hardened on the edges here. Let's go salumi. Unmistakably porky. A little bit of nutty flavor to that. Next, bresciola looking piece of meat. Mm. There's a dark richness to that meat, but it's a little bit harder. It's a nice little contrast to that soft salumi. The unknown meat. Mm. So soft, so salty. That's got to be a sub type of prosciutto. I really like this one. Put the other type okay. of salumi meat. We have <laughs> Can't even hold it. Mm. That's definitely a fatty type of prosciutto. The last piece is the lardo, straight up fat. Oh, that's decadent. That's, that's a bit naughty. Probably shouldn't eat too much of that one. I'm going to stack on one of the breads, some burrata, and then Oh, look at that bite. That would make for a phenomenal sandwich. You have a great vessel here, creaminess from that beautiful burrata, and then the perfect amount of salty meat. And this one is so soft and high in the fat. Brioche burrata anchovy. Mm -hmm. Always a fan of anchovies and the buttery bread is very tasty with it. We have a glass of Barbera d'Alba, which comes from the Piemontese in the northwest Italy. This is one of my favourite drops of lighter style red wine. It's so fruity. You got strawberry, it's like a little bit sour too, maybe some of the cherry taste. It's a beautiful white wine. If you like those less bold red wines, this is the one to get. Just got annihilated by the salumi burrata and the drinks at Roscioli Southern area. It's beautiful quality wine, beautiful quality meats. Definitely a place to go to. If you want pasta and other Roman specialties, they've got that too. There's something different about it there. I'm starting to get pretty full and the only thing you can do to make your stomach feel better is wash it down with more sugar. I'm gonna hit up some gelato. The next place is called Fata Morgana and it's a family owned gelato business. And there's one literally two minutes walk outside Roscioli. I've got to hit that up straight away and get my stomach feeling better again. With cream on top? Oh uh, no, it's okay. Got some gelato. On the bottom is Bronte pistachio. On top it's a, I think a chocolate moo melt. So it's got milk chocolate, salted caramel and hazelnuts. 
Bit of a winning combination there. Two types of ice cream. Got to eat them before they melt. Let's try the chocolate one first. Oh, that melt chocolate. Then you get sugary sweetness from the salted caramel. And a little of the ash and hazelnut in there too. Very nice. Let's try the Bronte pistachio. So Bronte pistachios are from Sicily and they are highly regarded as the best pistachios in the world. You can really taste that almost grassy, super nutty flavor from those Bronte pistachios. Super great gelato. That was beautiful gelato. Fata Morgana really nails that creamy, milky taste of gelato. I should add, the difference between ice cream and gelato is that ice cream has more cream content in it and has a different cooking process to gelato which is a higher milk content. I really love gelato. I love ice cream too, I don't discriminate. Insanely delicious sugary treat. I'm here for dinner at a place called Dal. Toscano. This is a Tuscan specialty restaurant founded in 1938 and it's just on the outskirts of Vatican City in the northwestern part of Rome. One of the things that Tuscans do so well is meat. So I'm going to get some Tuscan steak. I'm going to try a few other things as well. Fried zucchini, steak, wine and veg because Lord knows I need some veg after eating all pasta today. That's it. This is a Brunello di Montalcino. Montalcino is a town in the Tuscan region, just outside of Florence. And Brunello itself is made from 100% Sangiovese grapes. So Sangiovese is the main grape that you'll find in Tuscany. Oh, That's the first time I've actually had a Brunello. This one is really light. I was expecting a darker red. It's got more plum flavor. There's none of that real earthy or tar or leathery sort of flavour. It's just a brilliant white red wine. I'm really impressed with this. First arrival is the fried zucchini. It's come out in absolutely no time. It looks like it's got a light batter on it and it's been flash fried and it's come out so quick. It is warm, it looks good, it smells great. Have a look at this fried zucchini. It's so soft. It's a very light batter on that. Those vegetables for the day. That's still really hot on the inside. It's just a white coating. I imagine it's flour just on the outside. Nice light crispiness to it. Very simple but refreshing. Beef fillet steak has arrived and We've also got, looks like the seasonal vegetable is potentially a spinach of some kind. Also being armed with some tools of the trade, we've got olive oil, salt, and pepper. Let's have a look, Let's see what this steak is like. Oh, soft and juicy. I ordered it rare tonight, and it is rare. Oh, look at that meat. Yep. That's so soft and tender. Look at the colour on the inside of that Tuscan steak. You're gonna eat it whilst it's hot too. That is some tender meat. There must be a happy cow up in Tuscany. The difference with that straight away is the, the grassy sort of taste you get inside that meat. Because all those cows up in the mountains are just eating green grass all day. Here we have another bit of juicy meat. Mm. I'll be honest, the steak doesn't look like much, but when you eat it, it definitely hits the spot. Look at that redness. That's exactly what I want in a rare steak. Mm. It's something different to what I'm used to. Not super char grilled on the outside. All that flavor is definitely on the inside and the quality of the meat is certainly there. Next we have the greens. Nothing spectacular by the looks of it. I knew that when I would order it, it's gonna be good for me. And I need this, I need this. I wanna stay functional on this trip. That, that tastes like what you think it would taste like. Uh, very leafy, but overall just 
good green stuff for you. Nothing special, but very much needed today. One thing I almost forgot to dry, my steak and wine together. Chomper steak. And Brunello de Montalcino. Tuscan steak and Tuscan wine, of course it works together. For dessert, I had to get another tiramisu. I thought about getting something different, but honestly, I just want another tiramisu. That simple. Oh. Oh. Can never go wrong when you eat that creamy coffee. Chocolate and that Saviati biscuit. The Italians get this right every time. Sweet Jesus, that's good. Made it back to my accommodation at St. Peter's. Had to change over the SD card because it's getting so full with so much Roman food content. To recap this brilliant day of food. First, it started off with pizza for breakfast at Forno Campo de Fiore. Minimalist pizzas, but they executed strongly. Then I zipped off to San Astachio for the Roman coffee experience. Order the coffee, stand at the counter, slam down the coffee, have a little pastry, and then bolt out of there. I walked along the river towards Travesteri, towards the holy mecca, Trattoria de Enzo. My God, that place was unbelievable. I'm pretty sure that would be my death row carbonara and possibly my death row tiramisu and everything else there was superb as well. That is the number one spot that I went to today. Then after that, it was time to hit up Roscioli Salamaria, an incredibly cool restaurant, peeps of wine, burrata, and then housemade salumi. After Roscioli, I walked straight out the door towards Fata Morgana, which is a family owned gelato store, Bronte Pistachio Gelato. Oh man, that was so bloody good. You gotta get some of that because the Bronny pistachios are next level. Finished it off with Del Toscano highlights there. Definitely the steak and pairing that Tuscan steak with the Tuscan wine, the Brunello, and then having the second tiramisu for the day. Very greedy, had to be done though. So all that food and that's just day one. I've got two more full days here in Rome. If you like watching me polish off Italian and Roman food, Please subscribe to stay tuned for the next video and then please give this video a like so that we can keep rolling along. Cheers for watching guys. See you next time.